I like watching the flame inside a boiler. No, I'm not a pyromaniac. To me, the flame looks alive. Welcome to Boiler Room Detective. I'm your host, Ray Wolfarth. When first starting in the trade, my journeyman used to adjust the air-to-fuel ratio visually. I know that's incorrect now, but didn't back then. Back then, we used to use the Baccarat FireEye Classic, or as they were called in the field, dumbbells. I remember asking the journeyman why we didn't use the dumbbells. I learned about them in my apprenticeship class. This set the journeyman off on an expletive filled rant about how they weren't accurate and each reading would be different. It ended with him saying, fine, you want to know how to do it? Let's do it. We took three combustion readings of the boiler, and each reading was different. See, kid, you got to eyeball the flame, he said. On an atmospheric burner, the gas is sent through an orifice. The gas pressure is higher than the surrounding atmospheric pressure, causing a venturi effect and pulling in the primary air for the burner. When the flame is lit, the secondary air is mixed in with the flame and above it. The secondary air has several purposes. It provides extra oxygen to burn any remaining unburned fuel or carbon particles, reducing the carbon monoxide formation and improving efficiency. It reduces the soot and smoke by enhancing the combustion. By enhancing combustion, secondary air minimizes soot, smoke, and particulate emissions, leading to a cleaner operation. Proper secondary air distribution helps shape and stabilize a flame, ensuring efficient heat transfer and reducing the flame impingement on the boiler surfaces. You have more complete combustion, which means better fuel utilization, improving the boiler's efficiency and reducing costs. And lastly, Adequate combustion air reduces the formation of harmful pollutants such as CO and unburned hydrocarbons, improving emissions compliance. While talking about burner efficiency, we often hear the term stoichiometric combustion. This is the idea that the air to fuel ratio has no excess air and no unburned fuel, essentially perfect combustion efficiency, 100%. Ideally, each cubic foot of gas requires about 10 cubic feet of air, or perfect combustion is theoretical as there are too many variables in the combustion process. If the BTU content of the natural gas or the combustion air changes, this affects the combustion ratings. The BTU content of natural gas typically ranges between 950 and 1,150 BTUs per cubic foot. That's a 20% difference. If you were a flame watcher like me, you may notice what looks like sparklers at tips of the flame. This could indicate lower BTU content. The BTU content also varies from state to state. Pennsylvania's average BTU content per cubic foot of gas is 1,037 BTUs, while Hawaii's average is 918 BTUs. Most experts use 1,000 BTUs per cubic foot as the industry standard. When more air is supplied than required, it's called lean. And when less air is supplied than required, the flame is referred to as rich. A lean flame produces less carbon monoxide and unburnt fuel, while a rich flame produces more CO, soot, and unburnt fuel. The customer will have lower efficiency with a lean flame, but it is safer. In addition to increased CO, rich flame could cause flame impingement and deposit buildup on the metal surfaces, lowering heat transfer and increasing maintenance costs. Let's look at the air part of the combustion process. In reality, the burner requires oxygen or O2. Air is the conduit that delivers the needed oxygen. A cubic foot of air contains about 21% oxygen. One cubic foot of gas requires 10 cubic feet of air to support combustion. That is considered stoichiometric or perfect combustion. We cannot leave it there as the O2 level changes according to the barometric conditions. 
the oxygen level in the air drops to combustion air temperature or the moisture content rises. The O2 level rises when the outside temperature drops. This is more noticeable if combustion air is used from the outside, like a condensing boiler does. You will typically set the burner for 12 to 15 cubic feet of air for every cubic foot of gas. This gives you 20 to 50% excess air. Power burners include both primary and secondary air inside. To see how this works, consider the following scenario. The building has an 85% efficient boiler with an input of 100,000 BTU. BTU H means BTUs per hour. Based on 1,000 BTUs per cubic foot of gas, we will need 100 cubic feet of natural gas per hour. So you take 100 cubic feet and divide it by 60, and you'll have 1.66 cubic feet per minute. You take 1,000 cubic feet of air is a minimum required, and you add 200 cubic feet of air, that's 20% excess air. You have a total of 1,200 cubic feet of air per hour. That equals 20 CFM. I hope this clarifies the combustion process for you. If you find this video helpful, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more expert advice and tips. Thanks for watching. My boiler books are available on Amazon, and my technical articles are included in these industry publications. Thanks for stopping by Boiler Room Detective, and I'll see you on the next case.